the most important part of keeping this art form alive is to keep creating new things. To tell a story through movement. To keep pushing the envelope about what classical ballet vocabulary can do. What stories it can tell what moods and atmospheres and feelings that it can have you feel. Just by looking at movement without knowing any stories being told at all, and yet you're mesmerized. So to me, that is a very, very important thing to continue to push forward to keep this art form alive. And Annie's going where? So Anna, go with Matthew. Turn yourself. Yeah, so go, go ahead and come Robert, around. Robert, do you have a second? We could start talking a little bit about um, Bailamos. I don't know the story behind it, but it looks like they're both kind of longing for something from what yeah. I could see from the video. It's interesting that now you're making me remember. One. And one, and one, and oh, five, six, seven, eight. My first Good, memory start. of doing ballet was uh, in high school. I wanted to be a gymnast and I wanted to be a diver. And both my coaches, they wanted me to take ballet lessons so that I could polish five, my six, and presentation. Seven, eight, and rock, and rock. I just know that a very, very, very short time after those first few classes that I found what I need to be doing in this world. Okay. Now that we know who we're paired up with, let's take a look at it one more time. From the ladies' entrance, because the so gentleman... So my directorial career has been going for 15 years now. Before those 15 years was a 20-some-odd year career as a dancer. So it's, I've been doing this for a long time. Albion is these arms. I'm, I'm not feeling that part. To me, everything that I always did on the stage, every single performance was of complete importance, whether it was the Metropolitan Opera House or some small little stage in the black box somewhere. I always felt the same excitement and nervousness and, and adrenaline. And it's the same thing with choreography. Choreography is always difficult for me. I, I marvel at some of my colleagues who just toss it off like that. And, and, and sometimes people say, but it looks so easy for you. Would that it were, you know? <laughs> I, obviously, the more you do something, the better you get at it. I, there's always this question of, why bailamos? There's a big Latin community here in Orlando, and it made sense to reach out to your community. That community is growing. This whole Central Florida is the second fastest growing area in the country at this point. I think that the Latin culture is a great resource for artistic expression. There's an endless supply of material that you can play with. This is bold, it's beautiful, it's bailamos! I think uh, with bailamos, we use some music that everybody knows. We use huapango, we use uh, danzón de marqués, we use uh, this one ballet I, I call Ojalá, it's using music of Chavela Vargas. It's fun to to move in a very contemporary way. I was uh, directing Ballet de Monterrey in Mexico at the time, but I was doing a gig in the Royal Ballet School, the graduating class, and I was uh, asked to go there to choreograph. So while I was there, I went and saw a play. But I came back to Mexico. I was using the essence of the energy that was created on that stage at that theater in London represented that longing, that never-ending hope that somebody would come back and somebody would return, and that's essentially... That's essentially and, that, and you get that. And oh, Yeah, exactly. You do, you do. And ojalá this could loosely translate to, I hope. I'm very collaborative when it comes to my creative process as a choreographer. Before I even finish saying what I want them to do, they're already doing it. These are elite athletes that we're putting on the stage. They also are artists. It's very satisfying to work with people who understand the collaborative process. There was always this feeling, you know, you get up every day and you're happy to get up and you run to go and have a great day, right? Somehow, I have this naive 57-year-old 
kid inside of me who believes that things are meant to be good. Sometimes the obstacles, depending on what they are, sometimes they are just ridiculously unfortunate. And it basically just inspires you to figure out how to get around it. You know, if a tree drops in front of you, you gotta sort of climb over to go under it or go around it somehow, right? If you wanna keep going. So I think that these, these things that kind of enter the space as you go are just things to kind of push out of the way. I think sometimes they do help inform where you actually get to in terms of your creative process. We are done. <laughs> we are done. <laughs>